Hi everyone. As you know, my YouTube channel is dedicated to helping people better their health and well-being. But today's video is about helping a homeless man by the name of Craig. My band members and I often see Craig on a Saturday night after our show in South Bank, Melbourne. But a couple of things that really stand out about this homeless person is that I never see him intoxicated or under the influence of drugs and above all, he's always happy despite his situation. I recently asked Craig if he would be willing to share his story on camera and he was more than happy to do this for me. I also told him that I wanted to pay him for his time but didn't actually say how much. I encourage you to watch this video to the end and see his reaction when I give him $200 for doing the interview. What Craig also doesn't know is that I've created a crowdfunding campaign for him in the hope that we can raise enough money to help him get back on his feet. To go to the campaign and see a full breakdown of what the money will go towards, please click on the link in the description of this video. Any amount will be greatly appreciated and help get another person off the streets. If you choose not to contribute, I respect your decision, but at least the next time you see a homeless person, you might be a little more understanding and compassionate to what they go through on a daily basis. Please continue watching. I ended up homeless because I, uh, I met a girl from a country town, a place called Sale, and um, yeah, we got together and she convinced me to go live with her, so I, I quit my job, left my flat and spent all my money moving to the country to be with her, and um, yeah, she ended up being really violent, you know, normally it's a guy hitting the girl in the relationship, but it was the other way with us because she knew I wouldn't hit her back, so she could get away with it. And I mean, no guy's gonna go down to the police station and say, my girlfriend's hitting me, so. Yep, okay. I could deal with that, but it got worse and worse, and then she stabbed me with a screwdriver, so I broke it off with her, came back to Melbourne, and had nothing to come back to. That's basically because you spent all your... All yeah, time. well, I spent my last $30 on the train ticket back. You know? Wow, all right. Um, a lot of people will probably be wondering, do you have any family, and, and have they tried to help you get off the streets? Well, yeah, I've got family, but um, not that can, not that can actually help me. Like my dad, and my my mum, and my two sisters, they all live in the same house out in the northern suburbs. But my dad, my dad's in the army. Um, mum does whatever dad says, and my sisters do whatever dad says. And dad had me out of home at like fourteen, and said, "You're on your own." So any reason why he did that? But... Oh, I was being a little shit when I was younger, but you know, got. Everyone goes through that stage when they're a teenager where they're rebelling, uh -huh. you know, talking back and all that, and, yeah. And it ended up uh, working against you in the end. Yeah. Um, so. can, can I ask, what, what was going like through your head the first time, or the first night that you realised that you're, you're homeless, that, that you know you don't have a roof over your head? Well, for, for the first uh, couple of weeks, it was just every night crying and all that, it just it was like the end of the world, you know, like, you didn't know what you're going to do, you don't know where, it's scary, you know, really scary, you know, I didn't know where to eat, where to sleep, anything. Um, I actually met a homeless guy that showed me where all the suit vans were, all that. that, that homeless guy was actually the guy named Mousy that got stabbed to death a while ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, he got stabbed to death under the bridge, well, um, yeah, it's been in the newspapers and that a lot lately, and yeah, he was actually the guy that showed me where everything was, like the suit bands and the salvos and, yeah. Any place you could get help, help basically? Yeah. What, what's a typical day for you? Like, r run us through a typical day of what, what you do. Um, normally, uh, I try to fall asleep out the front of where your band plays. Yep, which is in South Bank. Yeah, yeah on South Bank, and then um, 6 o'clock, the... Security will come out and say you've got to move out because it's under that sheltered part where I sleep. So I move out to the bench, and um, if it's raining, well, I just got to start walking. If it's not, I'll probably sleep till about seven or eight. And then I'm, I get up and I start walking around asking for change, trying to make enough to get something to eat, or trying to make enough for a room for the night. And that takes all day. So, so, how much money on average would you make a day, and what what do you normally spend it on? Well, I know I always normally make the ten dollars to eat, and even if I don't, by nine o'clock at night, 
or 8.30 at night there's a soup man that comes out and I can eat at that if I don't have enough. I mean, it's not the best food. It's cold pies and rock hard dim sims and all that, but you eat it if yeah. you're hungry. And, um, yeah, and then after I make the money to eat, I start trying to make $25 for a room. Most nights I don't make enough, so on average, probably about $15 a day. Obviously, the, the, there has uh, been better days you yeah. know, like where I've made more than that, but not often. Obviously, the, the rooms that uh, you, you rent out for the night are shared accommodation with other people? Yeah, it's um, $25 a night, for a, um, depending on which one you go to. And, and you don't get your own room, you're in a dorm with like five other guys. Okay. You know? yeah. can, can I ask, um, how, how do the majority of people react to, to, towards you like when you ask them for, for change? What kind of reactions do you get? Oh, no. 90 out of 100 will ignore you, um, 10 out of that, the 10 left will listen to you but doesn't mean they're going to help and then probably the 3 out, the three out of the 10 might help okay. and it could, it could be 10 cents, could be $2, you might get a $5 note, it all depends, yep. so yeah, it's a lot of walking and asking. Um, I'm sure you probably get this but you know like a lot of people will be thinking what's stopping you from from getting a job you're able-bodied you know you you can you can walk you can talk well first of all I haven't got the right clothes I need a shave and a haircut yep. and so second even if I did like manage to get a job you can't sleep in a park and get up and go to work you that's, know you've got to eat thing. you have to shower you have to wash your clothes you have to have slept all before you go to work if someone was to offer you a job though what what would you do like what what, what would you be willing to do as a job not anything really so no. you're, you're I'm not a qualified classy. no i'm a qualified bartender and waiter but i'll doesn't mean that's all i, I will do i'll do anything really. that's what you did before yeah I've done a bit of a few different things, but uh, yeah, that's what I was doing before I became homeless. What, what's something? What's something that you miss the most about your former life before you became homeless? What, can you? Um, pretty much all the small things, like being able to sleep in a soft bed, walk into the next room and have a shower, or walk into the next room and pull food out of a cupboard. Not having to worry about where you're sleeping every night, you know. That's what, about it. What can ordinary people like like us do to help homeless people? Do you think? Uh, individually, I don't know. You, I don't know. Listen to them, pretty much. Like the homeless guy comes up to you and asks you for help. Don't just ignore him. I mean, even if you can't help him, at least listen to what he has to say. You know. It's, so it's a self-confidence thing too, like, you know. Well, when you're homeless, you get kicked out of cafes just because of the way you look and, you know, people don't want you around and all that. So even just someone listening to you helps. What, what, what would you say is the, the, the hardest thing that you've had to deal with as a homeless person since you have been homeless? Drunk idiots kicking, kicking into me while I'm asleep or pouring drinks on me while I'm asleep or screaming in my ear while I'm asleep, stuff like that. That's awful. So, so they actually do. Oh yeah. Do this sort of stuff. The first month I was homeless, it was around, around this time of year, spring racing carnival. Five guys dressed up in suits. They weren't business guys. They'd been at the racing carnival, and kicked the absolute crap out of me while I was asleep. Took my bag and threw it in the river, and they had like all my ID, everything. What do you think it would take to end this nightmare for yourself, like to get you off the streets? Not me. Mm. Oh, um, pretty much just a stable place to live. Like when, once I've got somewhere that I know I can sleep each night, that's I'm fine. You yeah. know, I can mm. find work. I can save up. I can do what I want to. Then you know, it's just a matter of waiting. And like you were saying before, because I have because I have no mental problems or drug problems or kids or anything. I'm not classed as priority. For, sorry, got the hiccups. For um, housing or anything so yeah. it's a matter of waiting you know okay um look craig i, I really want to thank you for doing this for no way and i did say um early on that i want to like look after you for for doing the interview and and sh sharing you know what your life is like so i've got a hundred dollars for you oh, are you sure I'm, I'm definitely sure thank right? you so much you're, you're welcome dude and um the other thing is that 
I, I told my partner, my girlfriend, about your situation. She's also a very sort of caring person, and um, she also wanted to donate a hundred bucks as well. Are you kidding me? I'm, I'm not I'm kidding. Me. I'm not. So she also wanted to give you another hundred bucks. Uh -huh. to, and I know this is not, you know, this might not get you off the streets Maybe. permanently, but uh, it's a little something well, to, to help you out. In well, the immediate. this is this is a this is a lot. I've never, I've never expected to have this much money at once since I've been homeless. I can, I can do a lot with this. I mean. I'm, I'm glad to hear it, man. The other thing, uh, as I said, my, my girlfriend's one of these people that when she hears a story like this, she goes all out. She's ended up getting you a, a whole bunch of, uh, there's a whole bunch of snacks and oh, uh, toothbrush and um, she actually went online and, and found out what, what homeless people sort of require more than anything else. Yeah. Um, I so can't go wrong with fruit. Exactly, yeah, she's put some bananas in there, yeah, and, you know, some, some nice lint chocolate and stuff. And So ho hopefully that, that helps you out as well. It does. And I'm hoping that uh, this interview that you've done will bring awareness to a lot of people out there that might go past a homeless person and not realise that it can happen to anyone. It can happen That's to me, right. it can happen to, to anyone out there. Um, and it can happen overnight, with just like it happened to That's you, because right. you you've never expected it. No. Um, I met a guy the other day who was a doctor and he's homeless now. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's, that just goes to show you that it literally yeah. can happen to anyone. Yeah. And uh, once again, thank you so much, man, for, for sharing you know, mm. thank your, you, your story with us. Thank you. Pleasure. And don't forget to say thank you to your girlfriend. Too. I definitely will, man. She'll be, like, she'll be very uh, glad to hear that. Oh, thanks again, Thanks man. again, Shane. You, you take care. Thanks.